everyone, it's Andrea and I'm here today to show you um, some of my Marilyn Monroe scrapbooks. Um, this contains news articles, clip-ins, adverts that I've collected over the last 20 odd years since I started collecting Marilyn back in 1990. Uh, a friend of mine asked me to show these. So I'm going to do a little flip through, we'll have a quick look at some of the pages and articles. I haven't decided whether there's going to be one book or two in each video, it really depends on how long they are because I don't think you want a 30 minute video of me looking at scrap uh, notebooks and, and, and Marilyn articles, but I think 5-10 minutes is doable. So this is the first book chronologically. Just to explain, I do like to put everything in chronological order, I'm quite fussy about that. It's not all in chronological order because when I first started collecting I just banged it in, didn't keep um, records of where everything was from and now I do. So you'll notice a difference in the early ones and it'll change as uh, the years go on to the point that at some point there'll be albums just full almost of internet clippings. Um, I don't even bother with internet clippings now because I'd be there forever trying to paste them in. It got to a point where I can't do any more. I've already got 23 of this size of album to do and I've got something like five or six stacks of clippings to do. I'm, I'm on like something like 2008 or 2009. Um, so um, what I'll do is when I get to the end, I'll actually, of actually showing you everything, um, I'll just do one as and when I complete a book. So. so this is the first one. It's actually not the first one I did. I think it's the second one I did, but it predates the first one I did. So it's number one. Um, so these came from WH Smith, which is a newsagent retailer in the United Kingdom. It is a sticky one. So what I like to do is on the very first page is put a picture of Marilyn or as in this case, several pictures of Marilyn cut from magazines or newspapers. So the first article in this book actually goes back to the 1950s. In fact, this is from Filmgoer magazine, um, April the 25th, 1953. Um, so obviously I wasn't born in 1953, hence why this predates my original one. So, and this is just about her working on the set of a film. So it's 53, it would have been something like, oh, this is about Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and How to Marry Millionaire and that sort of film. So that's, those films came out in 53. Um, so on the next page, we've got They're Making an Actress of Monroe, which was a January the 16th, 1954. And here we've got a picture from Gentlemen for Blondes, Jane Russell, and one from How to Marry Millionaire. So this just says about her wanting to be an actress and trying to make her an actor. Uh, and, and they're giving her a new look. So there's a the second little article below. So that was from Picture Go. Picture Go was a weekly magazine, in, um, film magazine uh, that came out in the United Kingdom back in the 50s, obviously. So I'll take it back out again so you can see both pages. I think it's gonna be one book per video. It's gonna take me a long time to get through because I'm gonna be looking at them. So on the next page we've got an advert from that same uh, from picture goer, um, which is um, it's actually still from uh, How to Marry an Air, and it's advertising uh, diamond engagement rings <laughs> from London. And on this page we have some little snippets, so um, letters that people sent in to various magazines um, about her asking questions um, or providing some information and so on. The next page is a massive article from Photoplay 1955 and is called Would You Take Marilyn Monroe Into Your Home and it tells about uh, Amy and Milton Green and of course Marilyn went to live with Milton and Amy in Connecticut um, in the 1955 um, and Amy Green has always said how lovely Marilyn was and how she was happy to have her in the home because as Amy put it I trusted her not necessarily her husband, which I'm sure she did. I trusted Marilyn not to do anything. So um, it is a really lovely thing to hear. And it's a lovely article. Again, there's some more little ones down here um, with your stars in June because Marilyn was born on June 1st. Um, and it's one here about them not wanting um, actors and actresses like Marilyn and Diana Dawes. And then there's a cover from an earlier thing. And again, when there's gaps, I do try and put pictures in just to fill them up. So again, we've got a Monroe Means Big Business. This is Picture Goer July 7th, 1956. 
So again, this is about bus stop and a partnership with Milton Green. Nice article. Also from the same one, you can see over here this photocopied one, um, which is about um, a parody of Marilyn and Sir Laurence Olivier that was on um, during the making of The Prince and the Showgirl. Um, but whether or not it was a hit, I don't really know. But uh, uh, Dillis Lays uh, played uh, Marilyn, which looks very good as well. And again, there's a few more articles and some, you know, letters and some pictures. On the next page, we've got a massive article from, I think it was, yeah, Photoplay, um, October of 1959. So as you can see, the years jump where I've got them. And this one says, what was Marilyn Monroe doing on Third Avenue? And it's just about this guy who basically stalked Marilyn for an afternoon and followed her around New York. And, you know, he followed her around, made a note of where she went and then went to those places to see what she did. And it would be things like trying to buy Polish sausage for Arthur Miller, um, going into the library and looking at a copy of his uh, collected plays, which had the dedication, dedication to Marilyn uh, and so on. And it's a very, very long article. Finishes down here. And just how wonderful it was to follow her around and she was just like any other housewife trying to please her husband by buying the foods he likes and things like that nice little article just a little bit about and let's make love from april 1960 with a picture of her with jack cole this is from a british magazine named today um and it's about the days miller left marilyn with monton during the misfits um by charles hamlet who wrote um, a book about it or some essays about it so it was serialized uh, so it's just about that and it's one of those parts and how the film was the end of uh, Marilyn and Arthur and how she had an affair with um, Eve Montand. as you can see it's been photocopied on this side because I haven't got more than one copy of it with modern ones, I do tend to do that. Again, this is from Today Magazine. I've got no, I have got the date, 18th of 2nd, 61. Another part of this, and it's Miller's birthday party and Marilyn walks out. So she, at this point, they were not together. They were together for the sake of the film, but they weren't together together. And she just couldn't pretend anymore. And she walked away at his birthday party. We move on to the 1980s now. So it's a major jump. Um, this is Sunday Express from December 1983 and this is about the discovery of the original photographs, the first photographs that were taken of her professionally by a photographer named David Conover. And uh, these came out and he published a book called Finding Marilyn and there's this lovely big article with photographs of Marilyn as she was then and she was Norma Jean. And then when she met David Conover on the set of Gentlemen for Blondes in 1953. Was it 52? Well, whenever they made it, 53, I think. Um, it's lovely photographs in that article. The 80s was a great time for articles on Marilyn and the discovery of photos. So here's another one, um, which was the Telegraph Sunday magazine, where the Monroe magic started. And these are pinups by Earl Moran, or Moran, depending on where you're from. And he took some uh, semi-nudes, topless shots, and he would draw them. He'd take photographs for reference and then he would draw um, calendars based on the pictures. So he'd change little details, like he might change your hair colour or, or something. But you can see all of these ones are his illustrations. Let's have a quick look. So these are some of the illustrations he made of her from some of the photographs he took. Um, lovely. I would love to see a full book of Earl Moran photographs and the illustrations he made from those photographs. I think that would be fantastic. Then we've got In Pigtails, The First Flicker of the Candle. This is um, the publication of the photo book by Andrew Didieris, uh, Marilyn Monomore. 1980s was major for Marilyn, but it's when the whole thing really exploded. This was 1986 and so Again, Norma Jean, lots of lovely photographs. Then we get, of course, some information on books and some questions and basically some little tiny articles. Um, this one's about the book by Anthony Summers Goddess. 
again this one is about the Gloria Steinem book we have a full article on the Gloria Steinem book starting here um, the woman who died too soon this was from the Sunday Express in um, uh, on the 8th of February 1987 and Gloria Steinem was really the first feminist reappraisal of Marilyn's career and life um, and it is a fascinating book and it's illustrated with beautiful photographs by George Barris who sadly died recently I think it was either this year or last year um, he took some of my favourite photographs I love this one of her on the beach he took some wonderful pictures of her very famous pictures of her as well um, and he brought out another book which is lovely and as it says when the past dies there is mourning but when the future dies our imaginations are compelled to carry it on and that's quite a long article about her and I've just illustrated it with various pictures of her from throughout her life again this is book reviews from the Sunday Telegraph the review of Gloria Steinem and a book called Joe and Marilyn A Memory of Love uh, now this one is a book about um, a little article about Arthur Miller's autobiography and then over here we've got various letters tributes by fans because it was the anniversary of her death uh, the secret genius of Marilyn far from being the dumb blonde she played in so many films she liked nothing more than to curl up with a good book by Proust so it tells you a bit more about her because these books were coming out telling us things that we never knew about Marilyn this is only part of an article I do actually have the full article because I actually have the magazine um, it's U Magazine uh, July 26th 1987 I was only really interested in the Marilyn section. It was actually about Elvis and Marilyn. And it was just some of the items, a couple of lookalikes, um, key rings, busts, clock, mugs, and so on. But the main part of the article she was, was a very, uh, um, it, it was an article about the last interview she gave to Richard Merriman um, in 1962, shortly before her death. And it's illustrated with the photographs that were taken for that article by a photographer named Alan Grant. And I actually like these photographs because she just, she's at home. It's, it's the only time we see her in her Brentwood bungalow, um, even though we really only see little bits of it in the background. And it, it tells the story of her giving that interview and what was going on in her life at that time and she, she's hanging from the the rafters of her bungalow there and here she's where she's got her foot on the chair as you see with her spiked heels on she actually punctured the seat so and the person that owns that the puncture mark is still in in the fabric it, it's just stuff like that is gold to a Marilyn student on here, this is basically um, from August 87. Uh, again, about the, her death. It's the anniversary. It was 87, it was 25 years. Um, so this is a, a Jack Cardiff photograph, which is beautiful. And it's just about all the memorabilia that was coming out. At the time, the estate was managed by um, a solicitor named Roger Richmond. Um, and he was very strict on what he would allow Marilyn's face to appear on, not like today, they don't stick her on anything, but in those days he was very strict and turned down lots of different things. This um, is Marilyn, this is about actresses who have played Marilyn over the years in various productions. So we've got Stephanie Lawrence, who appeared uh, as in a musical. We've got a lookalike named Vicky Scott. Um, National Theatre actress Kelly Hunter. And she played her in Insignificance. And over here we've got Linda Reagan, who was from High the High, who played her in The Legend, which was a play, and how they identified and got into the part with her, and so on. Uh, next page, this side is from the Daily Mail, and this is Monroe's first picture sold, is sold to a town in love with a legend. So if you remember right at the beginning, well, not right at the beginning, but close to the beginning. The very first article from the 80s was about David Conover. Well, this is about the sale of those images um, by his family. Um, for £14,190 at Christie's. Um, 
And then actually a documentary was actually made about this called The Discovery of Marilyn Monroe. You can get it on DVD. It's, it's lovely. It is, shows lots of the photographs, some memorabilia. Talks to James Dougherty, Robert Mitchum, Jane Russell. The usuals, but in you know they're the ones you want in these, in these, these documentaries. This one is, again, about... Marilyn Mon Amour, which is the Andre de Dennis book, the first one he did. That's lovely. And then on this page we've got the first part of an article called Marilyn is a Girl's Best Friend. So this is about female fans of Marilyn, people who have been inspired by her. Some of them are lookalikes, not all of them. So we've got here Caroline Taylor, who is a Marilyn lookalike. Um, and again, Pauline Bailey, who was a very big Marilyn like in the 80s and early 90s. And then on the back, well, there's a, a girl named Laura DeWolf um, in her room, which is covered with Marilyn pictures. These actually were cut from a calendar because I have that calendar as well in my collection. Um, so it's just, and it's about how they relate to her, why they like her. I mean, Pauline Bailey saying, I don't see Marilyn, I see Pauline when I look in the mirror and how she gets to work. Even I don't think I look like her double. There's no such thing. To me, there's not anybody better than Marilyn. She's wonderful, she's unique. No, people are never gonna see her old and, and horrible and, and so on. Uh, so it's very, very, very interesting to see how Marilyn has uh, affected people's lives over the years. Uh, we're near the end now. I said it'd be a long video, so they will only be one at a time at the moment. We've got an article about Moscow and, and Russia and Marilyn in Russia. Not sure she ever went, but a uh, uh, time capsule with a Marilyn memorabilia will not be open until August 5th, 2062. I wonder if I'll still be alive then. I'll be very old. Um, again, we've got one here about Marilyn's top being sold being worn by a lady named Kay Kent and more of her in the next pages and as I said here's Kay Kent again you can see she was stunning um, Kay Kent uh, wore this blouse so that's an article about how much that blouse went for back in the 80s which was 7150 it's gone for a lot more since that and um, a lot about auctions on this page uh, black dress from something like it hot photographs and then various little bits and pieces and this one here is Curtain Falls on a Unique Show which is about um, a, uh, a museum and they sold the little black dress the one she's wearing in that picture from something like hot and it was actually sold at the time to the Museum of the Moving Image in London no longer in existence but I've actually seen that dress in person then we've got more about um, Marilyn as a young lady, still looking like Norma Jean in these pictures. This is um, by, I think, it's, yeah, William Carroll. And we've got lots of pictures by William Carroll came up quite recently this session um, and in colour as well, which is beautiful. So a nice little article there. And then we get on to the very first of the real scandal articles. Marilyn, was she really this bad? Which is based uh, upon the book by Ted Jordan and everybody knows Ted Jordan was a complete and utter liar. So we won't even go into that. Uh, on the next page we're back to Pauline, uh, not Pauline, back to Kay Kent um, and look like, so this is a look like uh, named Kate who was uh, appearing as Marilyn as something and made it into the papers for no apparent reason. And then the very sad articles about the lovely Kay Kent who Sadly, at 24 years old, killed herself by swallowing to her mother's pain medication and vodka. She was very depressed at the time. Her boyfriend had split up with her for a younger girl. Her mother had recently died and she adored her mother and it was just really tragic. I don't actually remember it when she died. I don't remember Kay when she died, but I do remember hearing about her as I got into the Marilyn thing. Um, and basically there's a, a, a big article on Kay Kent here. Uh, dressed up as Marilyn, what she looked like before she bleached her hair and how pretty she was and uh, again um, why it had to end in tragedy which is nonsense it didn't have to um, again overdose because there's her wearing the dress from someone like it hot and this is um, look likes at her funeral which is a bit odd so here we go and I think this is the last article this is again another photo set the magic that was Marilyn and this one uh, 
is from Marion and the Camera, which is a massive book, lovely book. Um, beautifully reproduced photographs. I will show it to you one day. I've got two editions, a paperback and a hardback. Introduction by Jane Russell. And it just shows you a few of the pictures uh, that were in it here. And you must remember, and here, when this book came out in the 1980s or 90s, 80s, Marion the Camera, um, when these books came out back in the day, these pictures, some of these pictures had never been seen before. There was no internet. Um, they were, it was like you bought a book and you looked through it and it was like, oh my God, look at this picture, you know, because you'd never seen it before. So that is the first of my Marion scrapbook and this video was 20 minutes long. Um, I'll try not to make the next one as long. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to see more, do leave some comments. Obviously, like, comment, subscribe, and share this with your friends, especially if you know they're Marilyn people. I love to share my Marilyn stuff and knowledge with, with other, other fans, so please, please do share it. I will see you all soon with another scrapbook. We'll, we'll go on to book two soon. Um, I'll see you soon, Marilynettes. Bye now.